Hey everybody, it's Travis Vankley speaking. I design solutions application specialist and uh, today what we're going to take a look at is working between AutoCAD and Inventor. We got a question from one of our viewers asking to clarify a little bit about how you would use a DWG with an Inventor part file. So the real secret of it all is closed polygons or closed polylines. What you see here, I've got AutoCAD 2013 open and just a little sketch here. And if I highlight over some of these objects, you'll see that I've got some closed polylines or polygons. And then over here in this corner, I've got some solitary objects that aren't really together. So it's just simply four lines. So I've got this saved as example DWG. And if I come over here to Inventor, I've got a part set up here. So Initially, if you're going to use a DWG in a sketch, you're going to want to make sure that the DWG is saved and that you have your part file already saved as well. Otherwise, it's going to give you a warning that you're going to have file linking issues. So, uh, to get started, we'll come back to 3D model and to, to start off a sketch, we're going to come to Create 2D Sketch. And I'm going to just choose this plane here. And it tips my uh, view up over a little bit. So just use the view cube to bring that back to where it should be. Now you'll notice that I've got my sketch options over here and to the right you'll see that there's this ACAD button here for insert AutoCAD file. So if I click on that it's going to bring me over to a dialog box that lets me open up some files and I'm just going to come back and locate this example DWG. So once I've selected that I'll choose open and if you look down in the bottom left, you'll see that it's doing some things in the background here. It's saying loading presentation. One other thing uh, to make note of is this drawing that I have here in AutoCAD is actually in architectural units. And so you'll want to keep your units the same. So if I type in units, I'll get this dialog box here, which is let me choose architectural. And I've kept the precision to 1 16th of an inch because that's pretty precise for AutoCAD. Uh, if you were working in metric, you could just come back here to decimal and change your precision however you need to. I'm just going to cancel out of that and go back to Inventor. So now you can see I've got my import dialog box. And uh, I've only got the one layer here, so this all looks good to me. I'm just going to say finish and it's going to load up that DWG in here for me to use as a sketch. It says error opening file, make sure input file is DWG and it's not currently opened. Well, we know why that is. So we'll just close this out. And let's see if we can't do that again. finish okay so it's brought my my file in as it was over on the other side if I wanted to I could make some changes as to the orientation of this but just for what we're trying to do here I just want to um, move forward with this profile in place so I've got as you can see some different geometry here just some isolated lines and when I bring these in in Inventor, even though this is a closed polygon in AutoCAD, you're still going to see them as individual lines. However, if I say finish sketch and return to that profile now, if I want to do an extrusion of this, we're going to see some specific behavior. So automatically I'm getting the sketch doctor button here. You're saying examine profile problems. So it's saying that there's some stuff in here that you might want to take a look at a little bit closer. So I've got this closed region here for the circle, obviously, one continuous line. But I'm unable to use these here. So what I can do is actually sketch over this, right? So I can select these lines, turn them into construction lines, or um, just simply create another line around it. But for the time being, Let's just extrude this. We'll extrude that one way. And we'll make that three quarters of an inch. So that works. Now I've lost my sketch. So let's share that sketch. 
by right clicking will expand the extrusion. We'll right click and say share sketch. And now I'm going to come back into this sketch up here and I'm going to edit it. There's some, a few things that I want to do to this sketch just to make it work. So one of the things I could do is select everything now and change that to construction lines. Now I know this won't define anything, but it gives me a good line, uh, a good starting point for my new sketch. So I could choose rectangle, and with this disabled, we don't want construction lines anymore. We can simply just start putting in the lines that we need. And there you have it. So when I say finish sketch, it's saying a profile loop could not be repaired after sketch geometry was edited or deleted. Use edit features to reselect the profile. So what it's saying is, well, we made that a construction line, so now that extrusion isn't going to work. So we'll come back and we'll just change that. We'll go back to our sketch, say edit sketch. We'll change this back. So if we say finish, now our extrusion comes back and we've got this nice sketch that we can work with moving forward. So again, now I want to extrude and you'll see that I've got that region the way I want it and I no longer have that little red cross in my extrusion dialog box because this profile is good to go. So I'll just switch that back the other way. We can accept that and there you have it. So this is a, a DWG within our sketch. We didn't really use it to define a whole lot, but what essentially you want to use for your DWGs, they're just guidelines, and then you come back and you can resketch over them. So uh, hopefully that answers the question about how to use DWGs. Uh, you can also use them uh, in assemblies to help with placing parts. Um, that's a pretty handy tool as well sometimes and another thing that you can do now once that you have a part created with this is you can actually export to a DWG you can export parts and assembly files into DWGs uh, for different workflows sometimes this is a good way of doing it say if you're, you want to bring a DWG into 3ds Max maybe you created a complex assembly in Inventor and you want to bring that into Max as one object, well you can do that with the export functions. So that's pretty handy as well. Just another little workflow tip for you. Anyway, it's Travis Bankley speaking, signing out. Have a great day.